Hello, Outlaw Bookseller Steve Lee Andrews here. Um, this is kind of a shameless plug video for a very old book, which um, I wrote with a friend um, quite some time ago. Um, this was my best selling book and my first book, this little mini guide here, 100 must read science fiction novels. And this video is really just about this and how it came to be written and what have you. And um, first of all, I want to give a shout out for my collaborator on this, my old friend, great writer, Nick Renison. This is Nick's next book, which is out in November, I believe. This is a proof copy. It's called 1922. Um, and it's a great book. It's called Scenes of a Turbulent Year. Now, Nick is incredibly well read. He has a brain the size of a planet. If you read any of the broadsheets, you'll see reviews by him. He writes for History Today. Um, a wonderful bookseller. We worked together for several years from the late 80s to the late 90s on all sorts of projects mostly around publishing um, guides for readers and what have you in the book trade and outside it. And this comes out from the very wonderful Old Castle Books, home of No Exit Press, the great crime imprint. And it looks back at 1922 and all sorts of amazing things happened in 1922. But I'll cover this um, later on at another time. But that's just to say, um, Nick, great writer, comes out on the 18th of November. Watch out for it. Great Christmas present for anybody who loves history. So. I got to co-write this with Nick um, back in, I think it was 2004, 2005. And I was at work one day managing a, a university bookshop at that point. And Nick rang me up and he said, by the way, you, do you remember when you worked with me on the Bloomsbury Good Reading Guide and did some writing on that for the science fiction section? I said, yeah, of course. And he said, well, they want to start a new series of books at Bloomsbury in the ANC Black imprint. Um, that's the just look at the black collar from there. This is there you go, ANC Black, which is the reference division of Bloomsbury, at least was then. And um, he said, We want um, one of the things we want to cover is SF, and you're the natural person. They, they cheered of you, and obviously, you and I have worked together. So, how do you fancy it? And I was nothing loath. So, I was very lucky to be actually be approached to write my first book. I'd been trying to write a book on rock and roll for a few years before that, um, which is still unfinished. There's thousands and thousands of words on my PC. I'll do it one day. And the basic idea behind the Good Reading Guides um, here is another one 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels, which I co wrote also with Nick as well. And here's another one, 100 Must Read Books of Men, which I think I've already shown you. The idea of these was to help people expand their reading um, beyond their usual things and help them discover genres if they wanted to. And with them, what we wanted to do was they're not best ofs. Um, they're not personal top things either. The whole idea of must read was that if you wanted to sort of really look at an area of literature in some depth and look at all the major themes and look at it historically, then these were the books. Now, of course, as soon as people see a book title like 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels, the problem is they immediately think best, top, whatever. And that was not the case. And it's very, very much the idea I wanted to get across in this book was to give people a context for their reading of SF, an historical overview. So a lot of the books I picked in here weren't particularly my favourites. But they covered themes like, for example, there's a Jack Vance book in here called The Languages of Pow. And I put that in because I wanted to cover linguistics. Um, so when you've got a discipline like SF with lots of different topics and tropes being covered, it was very, the, the idea was just to have a broad view. So that's what the book is for. So it's a contextual book. Um, the most important part of it is the introduction, 3000 words or so, which um, I wrote, Nick did a little bit. I did most of it. And he let me have my head. I wrote about 60, 70 percent of this. Nick wrote about 30 percent as I was working full time at the moment, even though I could have done it all on my own because I was a first time writer. Because Nick brought me on board with ANC Black and we wanted to work together and he wanted to do a lot more SF reading. And he, he grew to love SF through reading this book, because prior to that, he wasn't sure and was always fascinated by the fact that I loved SF. And I love things like history and general fiction as well. Um, so that sort of got him into it. And. The book had seven printings. It's no print on demand. Um, there's been a Bulgarian edition and it's done pretty well over the years. It's, it's still in print. You can get it online. Not many places stock it. It is a bit out of date because it covered 1818 to 2004. But, you know, I'll be quite honest and say I would like to revise it. But A&C Black are not really interested because it still sells. And the current editor seems to think that 
it doesn't need revised because people can look this stuff up on the internet. Um, that's something that faces non-fiction publishing a lot these days, the idea that people can just look things up on the internet. And yet in my job, I get asked all the time for books on all sorts of subjects, especially older people. They, they want a book. They don't want to look things up on the internet. They want something that's been properly edited, properly written and what have you. So um, you can still get it. Um, it's very cheap. It's small. I still stand by the introduction and a lot of the individual book um, choices. There's only one thing in there which I would change if I could, if I could go back in time. I put Michael Swanick's Station of the, of the Tide in there, and I wish I'd put Dan Simmons' Hyperion, just a small thing. Um, this... this there are some reviews online where people say, I'm not going to buy this because it doesn't tell me in the description what books are covered. Well, if you do that, of course, people will just look at it and they'll think, oh, that's the hundred books. Those are the hundred best ones. And they won't actually read the book and get the context. And that's been really frustrating, actually, over the years on and off. And then people have published on websites the list and they haven't looked at the message in the book about why these books are must reads and the context. So um, if you ever know anybody who loves SF, please pick it up. Um, and um, I still stand by it. There are other great guides to SF out there. I'm gonna cover them in a future clip, which will be about SF reference books, as I've got tens and I absolutely love them. So that was um, that was how I got to do that. And um, I'd say still in print now, there's a shameless plug of the posters behind me and what have you, you know, and um, every now and then going across the house, I come across the, um, your bookmarks and what have you. And um, here's a little bit of ephemera. Um, the Broom's Good Reading Guide series went to about 10 volumes eventually. This is a little um, blab piece that went out to bookshops promoting the list. And interestingly, on the front of that is one for 100 must read graphic novels. That never appeared. Um, and this was issued 2008 because um, it's got 100 must read books of memory, which is my 2008 one, which came out two years after this one which was 2006 and um, the main sort of book in the series was the Broomsbury Good Reading Guide which had several editions before and after that and I made some contributions to that and that was Nick's Baby and it's a great book and um, a couple of my friends Nick Kalinowski and Vince Gassar they did the Good Reading Guide to World Fiction so it's fiction from around the world and they got that deal they came to me and said look can you put us in touch with your editor at ANC Black and um, I did and, and they went for it and it was great and as I say, there's 10 of these all together. I co-wrote three of them, and I also came up with the ideas for one called 100 Must Read American Novels. I conceived that with my friend, Nick Renison, and it took some, some taking to convince ANC Black they should do it. And I also suggested that Nick wrote a book with 100 Must Read Prize winning books, which he did. So, so that's the, the brief history of 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels. It's still out there. So if you want to pick it up, please do. And as I say, it is out of date. Um, hopefully one day I'll get to revise it. If it ever goes out of print, um, I'll reclaim the rights after six months and then I can redo it and I'll revise it, make it more personal, make it more like 150 books. Trouble is these days, because things are print on demand, contractually, the publisher retains the rights, so I can't do that. So hopefully one day it'll shrink down to such a level that I'll be able to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very proud moment when I opened the box of these on my doorstep and um, it's, it's a modest achievement, but it brought me a lot of pleasure writing it and um, I still stand by it. So that's 100 must read science fiction novels. Thank you.